to our part two of our manual muscle testing video. Today we're going to talk about the lower extremities. Uh, as always, we're going to worry about our patient positioning, that is one of the most important factors. And please enjoy. Thanks. The semimembranosus and semitendinosus are tested together. The patient will sit on the side of the table. The clinician will rotate the patient's foot medially and then apply pressure to the inside of the ankle, pulling out. Hold this position, don't let me move you. Similar to the other muscles of the hamstring, the biceps femoris is also tested with the patient seated. The foot is rotated laterally and the clinician places pressure on the lateral side of the, the leg and pulls out. Hold this position, don't even move you. When testing the quadricep group, Make sure that the patient is comfortable by placing your arm underneath the leg to be tested. Put my hand on your arm. The patient relaxes the leg as the clinician applies pressure to the lower leg in an attempt to force the knee into flexion. Hold this position, don't even move you. To test the hip flexors, we are going to test the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris. To do this, elevate the leg and have the clinician press downward on the leg proximal to the knee. Hold, don't let me move you. To test the external rotator of the hip, the clinician will place the hip in external rotation and will block the lateral half of the knee and apply pressure immediately above, proximal to the ankle. Hold, don't let me move you. To test internal rotation of the hip, the hip will be internally rotated with the clinician's hand on the medial side of the knee and the other clinician's hand on the lateral side of the ankle, pushing inward. Hold, don't let me move you. To test the tensor fascia lata, you would have the patient in supine, and you would put pressure on the lower leg in the direction of extension and adduction. All right, I'm going to raise your leg up. Right there. Hold, don't let me move you. Good. To test the sartorius, you would have the patient in supine position and you would put pressure against the anterior lateral surface of the lower thigh in direction of hip extension, adduction, and internal rotation. Alright, hold. Don't let me move you. To test the hip adductors, the patient is sidelined. The clinician will move the uninvolved extremity out of the way. The patient then lifts the lower extremity up off the table, and the clinician provides pressure trying to force the leg into abduction. Hold, don't let me move you. Good. test the glute med, you place the leg in extension, abduction, and slight external rotation. Apply pressure downwards. Hold, don't let me move you. Very good. Same thing for the men, except the leg will be in a neutral position, abducted, pressure downwards. Hold, don't let me move you. Good.
to test the glute max, place the knee 90 degrees, extend the hip, and apply pressure downwards. Hold, don't let me move you. This next muscle is the tibialis anterior. The patient is going to be sitting. The clinician is going to support the leg just above the ankle joint. To test this muscle, put the ankle into dorsiflexion and the foot in inversion without extension of the great toe. The clinician is going to push against the medial side dorsal surface of the foot in the direction of plantar flexion and eversion. Hold, don't let me move you. The next muscle is the tibialis posterior. The patient is going to be supine with the extremity in lateral rotation. The clinician supports the leg above the ankle joint. To test this muscle, put the foot in inversion with plantar flexion of the ankle joint. Put pressure against the medial side and plantar surface of the foot in the direction of dorsiflexion of the ankle and eversion. Hold, don't let me move you. The next muscles are the peroneus longus and brevis. The patient is supine with the extremity medially rotated. The clinician supports the leg above the ankle. To test these muscles, place the foot in eversion with plantar flexion of the ankle. Place pressure against the lateral border and sole of the foot in the direction of inversion and dorsiflexion. Hold, don't let me move you. The next muscle is the gastrocnemius. To test this muscle, you would have the patient lying prone. You would have the clinician place the patient's ankle into plantar flexion and apply resistance towards dorsal flexion. Hold, don't let me move you. The next muscle is the extensor digitorum longus. For this, um, to test this muscle, the clinician would stabilize the foot in slight plantar flexion with the toes slightly extended. Um, the clinician would uh, apply pressure against the dorsal surface of the toes in the direction of flexion. Hold, don't let me move you. Good. <laughs> The next muscle is the extensor hallucis longus. To test this muscle, the patient would be seated. The clinician would stabilize the foot in slight plantar flexion and apply pressure to the dorsal surface of the distal and proximal phalanges of the great toe in the direction of flexion. Hold, don't let me move you. The next muscle is the flexor hallucis longus. To test this muscle, the patient would be seated. The clinician would stabilize the ankle joint in neutral and stabilize the MTP joint while applying pressure against the plantar surface of the distal phalanx in the direction of extension. Hold, don't let me move you. For the next three muscles, the lumbricals, the plantar interosseae, and the dorsal interosseae. You will do two different tests. For the first test, you will place, you will stabilize the mid-tarsal region of the foot in a neutral position, and you will apply pressure against the plantar surface of the proximal phalanges of the first four toes. Hold, don't let me move you. Good. For the second test, Stabilize the MTP joint and place the ankle in slight plantar flexion. 
Apply pressure against the dorsal surface of the distal phalanges in the direction of flexion. Hold, delay, review. Good.